tonight we're going to be talking about uh, really we're going to be getting into several different methods to make your life easier as a tax lien and deed investor as, as far as uh, shrinking down the amount of a list to where you have a criteria that you're looking for and that's going to help you to determine which tax liens or which tax deeds you want to get started with. Uh, we're also going to talk about, well, let's go ahead and get into it. We have a lot of different things to talk about. I apologize about the delay, so let's go ahead and get started. My name is Steven Swenson. Um, I'm just going to go through this really quick because we have some students that are uh, that are new tonight but didn't attend last night, uh, so we're just going to go through this really quick. I attended my first tax sale in 1999. Uh, in uh, 2007, I established Tax Sell Solutions. Uh, which is a training tax lien and deed investing company. We work, primarily work with the seminar companies. Uh, we provided them with their training, their books, uh, their uh, you know list access, their websites, uh, their webinar training, their coaching. Uh, so that's what we did. We were primarily uh, you know the the actual trainers for these companies. We would put together the program and then we would support the students that they would that they would sell into their program as their company. And so we've worked with some of the largest seminar companies out there and really uh, we've taught over 20,000 students nationwide. We've taught students from every single uh, every single state, uh, even from out of the country, from Canada, from many different areas, how on you know on the, the steps and 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 the strategies to invest in tax and certificates, tax deeds, redemption deeds. Uh, our books have been featured on TV, uh, TV infomercials. Uh, and so, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. Even before we started uh, Tax Sell Solutions, we had already written uh, a training manual and book uh, on tax lien and deed investing. Uh, and so that's kind of my history. Let's go ahead and uh, just also want to show, because we do have some new students tonight, uh, a couple of properties, that, a couple of deals that we did uh, over the last 60 days, a uh, couple of Florida tax deeds. Uh, you can see this first property, three bedroom, two bath, has a value of about fifty-two thousand five hundred. Uh, we picked it up at the auction for uh, for just over ten thousand, ten thousand one hundred. Uh, with this particular property, we're going to rent it out. Uh, that's that's going to be kind of the strategy with this because of it's you know it's a uh, just within the com a community which makes it a good rental. So it's renting out for nine hundred dollars a month. So with this particular tax property, this tax deed, it's going to pay itself off within a year. Uh, okay, here's another Florida tax deed that we purchased. This is a three bedroom, one bath. Uh, has a value of about 65 grand. Uh, this one we spent a little bit more, spent 20,700. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn around and sell it for about 60,000. There's about $36,000 worth of profit in that property. Uh, so these are two properties, uh, two examples, um, and uh, you know there's a lot of opportunity out there, regardless of what your investment strategy is. Uh, and there's different, there's different many different strategies. Um, if you attended the webinar last night, uh, we're going to be setting you up with the username and password as, as, as well as the people that are on the line tonight, uh, unless you already have one, uh, to be able to use the website. Uh, and so there's a lot of possibilities on there, there's a lot of training, there's uh, uh, a lot of tools really, uh, um, and we're going to just continue adding tools uh, to it. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of new things coming, even more information. Uh, and uh, it's really going to be a good community uh, to be part of if you're into tax lien and deed investing. So now is really the best time to get started in tax sales, guys. I've, I've been, uh, you know, as I mentioned, attending my first tax sale in 1999, and it's amazing how the market has changed over that time. Uh, there's been a, a lot of different changes, uh, and really all of the changes are, are really pretty good for investors. Uh, you know, it makes it a lot easier to invest. It makes it a lot easier to research property. Uh, before there was a lot more work involved, you weren't going to be bidding on tax and certificates online or uh, you weren't going to uh, be able to, to purchase tax deeds without a, a, you know, attending an auction. Uh, and there's just a, and as, as far as actually doing the research, you were going to be spending days down at the county courthouse uh, going through pages of county records. Now we just type in a parcel number and we're able to pull up the property record. So tax sale investing has become a lot easier, but there's still that, uh, you know, that unknown, that lore um, that that a lot of investors want to do it. A lot of investors talk about doing it, uh, but there's not a lot of investors actually doing it. Uh, you know, even in, even in uh, in real estate investors, a lot of them uh, may have talked about tax liens and deeds, but don't really know how to be able to do that. 
Uh, and so you being part on the call tonight, you're going to be learning these strategies on how to really go out there and take advantage of the tax sale market. Uh, what has never started today is is uh, what has not started today is never finished tomorrow. And so, uh, as far as you guys, you guys are starting that step. Maybe you've already done it in the past. Maybe you've done some investing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different possibilities out there, and, and maybe this is the first time you've looked at, at tax sale investing. It really doesn't matter uh, where you are in that process. The process is just continue doing it. If it's your first deal or if it's your 50th deal. Okay, so we're going to go through this really, really quickly. Um, you know, as far as a tax lien definition, it's a claim against an asset uh, filed by a government taxing authority against the delinquent taxpayer. And there's really th three types of tax sale investing strategies or types. Uh, there's tax lien states uh, with a tax lien certificate. Uh, you're earning an interest rate return. Uh, you know, that's the primary the primary strategy with tax liens. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't acquire property through tax liens. And that's what that tax lien has. It has a property, uh, has you know a foreclosure right. So you have the ability to foreclose on the property and become the property's owner. Uh, now, with most tax lien certificates, about 95% of them, they're going to pay off the delinquent taxes, and you're going to earn your interest rate return. Um, you know, whatever whatever that set amount is. Now, with um, with tax deeds, you're really looking at acquiring real estate. You're buying property outright. So when you attend the auction, you know, you better be ready to purchase that property because now you're the owner of the property. There's no liens. You're paying off the liens when you do that opening bid amount. And so with tax deeds, you're really looking at it as a real estate investor. And now with tax redemption deeds, uh, they're really a kind of combination of both tax liens and tax deeds. They're uh, redemption deeds or tax deeds with a redemption period. And so uh, these are states like Texas, states like um, Georgia, and uh, you're going to earn a penalty return. So essentially, when you purchase a tax deed or a Texas deed, uh, a tax deed, they're, you're actually going to receive a deed, but the county's not going to record that with the, the the county's not going to record it until after that redemption period is passed. And so, if that's a six-month redemption period, if that's a one-year redemption period, once that redemption period is passed then they're going to go ahead and issue the deed in your name. Now, the property owner has a time frame to pay that back. Uh, and so they can go ahead and pay it back. And if they pay it back, regardless of when it redeems during that redemption period, you're going to earn you know, that 20%, that 25%. And so you know, with redemption deeds, there's a pretty good opportunity uh, for you know, either earning a very high interest rate re uh, return, usually in a shorter time period, uh, and then also the ability to acquire property. So what are the first steps? Well, before you get started buying tax liens and deeds, it's really important to do you know, some of the following things. The first thing is to pick an investor profile to get started with. Uh, you know, you guys uh, will have access to the website. And so when you go on to the profile section, we're going to have the state profiles, and we're also going to be ha have the, uh, the investor profiles there. Now, right now, we just have uh, uh, some, some screenshots out of our uh, out of our uh, book, but they're going to be, you know, three or four pages long. Some of them, you know, some of them are two pages, depending on the investment strategy. But there's going to be all the detail there. Uh, eventually, we're going to, to, you know, switch it over where there's live links and things like that, so they're even more interactive, and there's going to be more information there. Uh, but as you go through and read those investor profiles and the uh, profiles of each state, it's going to give you a pretty good idea of. Uh, what type of investment strategy you'd like to pursue, and then also, you know, uh, what states you can do it in, and that way you can narrow down the states. Uh, you can see what tax sale lists are available, what over-the-counter tax liens are available. As you read the profiles, you can find out if you can, you know, if uh, we may not have the list, you may contact different counties. Uh, but you know, we're going to have a good majority of them, uh, and so you're going to be able to download those lists and start uh, researching individual properties. Now. Uh, once you've gone through, you picked an investor profile, you reviewed the state guides, uh, then you're going to really start researching a tax sale list. Uh, you're going to conduct due diligence depending on the strategy. With, the, with tax lien investing, it's going to take less uh, research than with a tax deed property, obviously, because you're, you're not acquiring the property uh, as you are with a, 
with a with a tax deed. You know, you need to have an exit strategy already in place. With a tax lien, you may wait six months, a year, two years before you worry about foreclosure. And so, when you're doing a tax deed, you got to be ready to to you know, what is your exit strategy? Are you renting the property? Are you trying to flip it and make some money? Are you going to uh, you know what's what's the process you're going to go through? So let's get into the investment bracket systems. Uh, now, the, as far as the investment brackets, they're really uh, a system that can be used as an example to bracket property investment types. Uh, the bid amount is usually going to be a reflection of the property's value, and so the bracket system helps us uh, cate you know categorize and evaluate potential investments. Uh, now. We're going to go through each one of these uh, kind of one by one, so we're not going to go through all the numbers now. But you can see that we have the tax lien bracket and the tax deed bracket, and this is going to help you determine what type of pop properties you know are going to fit within each one of these categories. Okay, so as far as bracketing tax liens, the first thing is that we're going to look for is the minimum bid versus the assessed value. Now, aside from providing the the, the lien amount, uh, the minimum bid is also going to be a reflection of the property's value. So the tax lien amount is going to be equal to a single year's worth of delinquent taxes, plus the penalties. Also, the amount of the tax lien is almost always reflective to the property value. So the higher the tax lien amount, usually the more valuable the property is. You know, it's kind of common sense. Now, the key to profitable certificate investing is to purchase tax liens that have the highest assessed value for the lowest minimum bid. Uh, and so that's going to be your, your kind of your primary thing that you're going to be looking for when you're looking at tax and certificates. So as far as identifying your investment brackets, now when you're reviewing a list of tax and certificates, you're going to, or even tax deeds, you're going to find the opening bid amount can vary. There's taxing certificates that may be $100. There's taxing certificates that could be $100,000. Uh, it really just depends on the tax lien. Now, the opening bid amount, is, especially if we're looking at auctions, is usually going to be a reflection of the property's value. So the higher the opening bid amount, the more valuable the county has, has went through and assessed that property for. Uh, now, usually a tax lien is going to represent about 1% to 2% of the property's value. Um, and so what this investment bracket system will do, it's going to help you determine um, the minimum to maximum count, uh, cash that you'd like, investment capital you'd like to invest per tax lien. Uh, so the investment brackets amount can vary depending on, on what your goals are, what your objectives are. Uh, if your goal is to you know, just earn interest rate returns and that, that's what you're most concerned about, then you're just going to look for a property that have good value uh, that you can do that if you're, if you're looking to spread your money out over many different tax liens, then uh, there's different strategies that we're going to go through. Uh, so depending on your investor, your investor profile that you've chosen and also the capital that you have available to you, you're going to be able to have an idea of where, where you can start, uh, you know, what investment bracket to get started with. So as far as, as far as these brackets, first we're going to get into tax and certificates. Uh, now, guys, this isn't a, you know perfect. I've just given you some general brackets. Uh, there can be tax liens that may be higher amount with a lower assessed value, uh, you know, and it could be it could be opposite as well. There may be a partial lien on a three hundred thousand dollar property, but it's only you know one one quarter worth of tax lien, so it may be six hundred bucks. That doesn't mean that you can easily find those tax and certificates, but they're they're out there, and it really depends on what your strategy is. So um, I don't want you to just assume everyone will be like this, uh, but if we're looking at kind of that meet, you know, that medium area uh, as far as as far as property values, this is kind of a good bracket to look at or, or to consider when you're going through and looking at that 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 opening bid amount. So as far as that, as far as I've given you uh, a, a long explanation, let's go ahead and get started with it. Now, as far as investment bracket one, these are usually going to be tax liens anywhere between $10 to $500. Uh, they can be assessed anywhere from about $1,000 up to $25,000. Uh, know, 25, so these are usually going to be anything from a, uh, a strip in a backyard uh, to 
to valuable building lots, uh, valuable pieces of land. Uh, you know, in some areas, a $25,000 lot is actually a, pr a pretty good price for a lot within that area. Uh, now that you, you know, you, but you may only be pay paying five for it or three for it or, you know, whatever that cost is, and you're turning around and you're getting a pretty good property. Uh, and even with taxing certificates, if it's somebody's backyard and it's a $50 tax lien, chances are they're going to pay for it. They don't want to have to have the hassle of not having that piece of land when they try to sell the property. So, you know, 99% of those tax liens are going to redeem. Um, now, as far as in, breast, in uh, bracket number two, these are going to be tax liens that range from 500 to a, to 1,000. Uh, so your assessed value is going to be about 25 to 50,000. Now it's possible to find tax liens for a thousand that are worth more, uh, but you know that's kind of that's kind of where you're looking at. Uh, as far as tax lien bracket two, these are going to be tax liens that have a value of anywhere between a thousand to 2,500, and they're going to be worth usually anywhere from 50 to 150,000. Uh, and so you know. We're going to go through what type of properties are in each one of these brackets within a minute, and so we'll get into the, these in more detail. Uh, investment bracket four is going to be tax liens from about twenty five hundred to uh, five thousand, and these are going to be your properties from about one hundred fifty thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, and investment bracket five is properties or tax liens, excuse me, from about five thousand to ten thousand, uh, and the assessed value on these properties. Are going to be about 250 to, to 500,000. So that's kind of what we're looking at uh, with with number five. Now number six are tax liens that are over 10,000, uh, and they can be 50 to to a million. Uh, now it's possible that a, a tax lien that's, that's at 10,000 uh, or 20,000 even could be on a property that's worth 100 grand. Uh, it just depends on the different type of property, with, but with that type of tax lien certificate, or maybe that several different tax liens, that's a that's a uh, that's a foreclosure ready tax lien. Uh, you know, and, and it's kind of what you think of when you think about tax deed sales. All tax deeds are is is you know where the county essentially ate the taxes. Maybe they created their own county tax lien or just kind of their own collection effort that until you know. In, we're going to give this property owner four years or five years or whatever it is, and if they don't pay, then we're going to go ahead and foreclose and offer it for sale. So there's property that's picked up in tax sales all the time, and some of those tax lien certificates are going to go through the crack. And so if there's a couple of different tax liens, you may have a a higher, you know, it may be a ten twenty thousand dollar tax lien on a hundred thousand dollar home, but you're going to have a good chance of getting that tax lien certificate because it's a higher amount. And then you know, turning around and making thirty or forty or fifty or sixty grand off of it. You know, you don't have to make two hundred grand on every deal. If you can make twenty or thirty grand on a deal, uh, forty grand. You know, those that's on all, that's a good amount. I mean, you you know, once you've done one deal, you can do two or three or four more. Uh, and so, uh, you know, these are just some different ideas to think about as far as the bracket system as we go through this. Now, let's go ahead and get to our next slide. So here are some of the type of properties. Uh, as far as that first, you know, bracket number one, uh, we're looking at uh, residential building lots, commercial building lots, mobile homes, mobile, uh, vacation land, timeshares, uh, you know, uh, some type of farmland or, or ranch land. Uh, and so, uh, you know, with these different types of properties, some of them have value. Uh, you know, it's just good to see what what type of property it is, and, and you know, if it's fits within there, it's probably a pretty good investment. Um, for tax liens, you know, between 500 to 1,000, up to 50,000, these are where you're going to start getting your lower uh, dollar single family homes, your condos, your mobile homes with land, uh, your, you know, residential building lots, your commercial building lots, your large tracts of land. Uh, and so kind of in that, in that price range, you know, you can start getting some of that. But also, one thing I should have on top of that, um, I guess I do have uh, land. I mean, really, you know, within that within that 25 to 50, depending on the area, you know, there's parts of Florida where you know you have a, you can buy a single family home for 35 or 40 grand. Uh, there's other parts in Florida where you you know you can the the medium you know the the average single family home is 250 grand or even higher than that. So there's you know there's varying degrees. Of where that real estate is going to fit within that bracket, but this is the general idea. And as you go through and you start researching, well, 
you know, I have $2,500 I'd like to purchase. Let's see if I can get one tax lien. Uh, as you go through and look at some of the tax liens within that price range, it's going to give you a good idea of what the type of properties are available within that area. Uh, and so as far as tax liens, you know, up to 2500 this is where you're going to get your single family homes, your condos, a lot of the same things, your commercial buildings, uh, your multifamily residential will start coming in within this price range, and also the larger tracts of land. Okay, investment bracket number four. Uh, these are tax liens between uh, 2500 to 5000 uh, these are your properties from 150 to about 250. Uh, this is where you're going to get into your nicer single-family homes. You're in your better areas, or, or you know, more land, or you know, if you're looking at 150,000, it's going to be usually a higher, unless it's in within a really high market. You know, in parts of California, it's going to be you know 400,000 for your cheapest. Uh, but uh, you know, usually one hundred fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollar is a pretty nice home in a lot of places. Uh, your uh, <laughs> commercial condos, uh, you're going to have some um, multi multi units, your duplexes, your triplexes are going to be within this price range in a lot of areas. Uh, you know, nice commercial properties can start going. Uh, you know, your in this price range, uh, vacation homes. And then, of course, large, large acreages, uh, you know, like 20 acres, 40 acres, 60 acres uh, in different parts. You, you know, there, it's usually going to be some pretty nice property if it's worth, uh, you know, 150, 250,000. Uh, investment bracket number five is, you know, about five to ten grand. Uh, this is where you're going to get properties, uh, I'd say anywhere from two to 400. I know I have 250 to five, but I think that's, a, you know, maybe a little bit high. Uh, you can definitely find it within that price range. Uh, <laughs> it just it just depends on the strategy and the area. Uh, these are where you're going to get a lot of the same properties. Um, you know, I don't want to go through and name each one of them, just but just kind of get an idea. Commercial properties, your high residential land. You know, so this is where maybe you'll find like a five acre piece. Uh, you know, that's right next to a subdivision that's in prime real estate. Uh, well, you know, it may be worth three hundred or four hundred grand. Uh, and, and so that would be a pretty good tax and certificate, even though it's land. Uh, you know, I'm not afraid, you know, don't be afraid to purchase land if it has good value. If it has good value and you can get a good tax lien on it, a lot of times it's going to be an easier property to flip. You know, you're not going to have to be worrying about evicting people. Uh, you know, you're not going to have to worry about, about um, some of those different things. And if it has a good value, then, you know, you can turn around and flip it usually pretty quick, pretty quickly and make some good money on it. So that's just one thing to think about. If a piece of land has good value, then you know don't don't automatically uh, say, oh, I don't want to invest in that because it's land, because it may be the best investment. In fact, I have investors that I've worked with that, that only want to purchase land. Uh, you know, and and these are investors that have been, you know, investing for a long time, and so they understand that with land, it, it's uh, you know it's a little bit easier to sell. Uh, they're not going to have to worry about anything. All they, they may just clean up the property a little bit if it needs it or, or cut some lawn, uh, depending on the type of property type, and then turn around and, and, and wholesaling it. Uh, and so there's lots of different strategies. Now, the bracket number six, the last strategy, are tax liens over 10000 These are going to be properties anywhere from 300 to, you know, it's, it's high because it can be, you know, dip, depending on the tax liens. As I mentioned, there's tax liens for 100000 out there uh, or even more than that. On some of those huge, huge properties, there can be massive amounts of property taxes. And so, within here, you can see mansions and estates. Uh, there's definitely been a lot of those type of properties that have been sold. Uh, commercial buildings, uh, ranches, farms, um, large tracts of land, apartment buildings. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, you know, we were recently are looking at some tax and certificates. Uh, that are foreclosure ready. In fact, they really need to be foreclosed on uh, within the next uh, within the next four to five weeks in Florida. And these are properties on uh, these are condos within a mall. Uh, and so, you know, we're doing some research on them. But these are going to be great, you know, great tax and certificates to purchase. Uh, and we're going to be purchasing them through the secondary market. Uh, you know, and and because you know these are these are tax liens that were hold or held by uh, by a large bank. And, and 
you know, essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have a chance to foreclose and have a chance to foreclose on them. Uh, and within within three to six months, either two things are going to happen. Uh, I'm going to make 18% guaranteed on my money for all of the tax lien amounts that you know that I put into it, uh, because what you're essentially doing is is you're going through the through the tax deed foreclosure. You're filling out the foreclosure application and foreclosing on the tax lien. So you're going to pay any. I'm going to pay any of these redemption taxes, uh, any of the the additional taxes. So maybe it's you know there's 2009, 2010, 2011. I'm going to pay off all of those property taxes, um, and and then become the primary lien holder. And so the county will actually send it to the foreclosure. And because uh, because we uh, we went through the tax deed the tax deed application, that's going to give um, us the opportunity to to either acquire the property or make 18% on our money during that time. So, if, you know, in six months from now, maybe the property will sell. If it sells, I'm going to make my 18% off my investment, my full investment the entire time. Uh, and so in a lot of areas, when you when you purchase an over-the-counter tax lien, you know, there's going to be there's going to be a difference between the redemptive amount and the face amount uh, because, you know, the county is going to be collecting interest or collecting taxes until somebody else purchases that tax lien. Uh, but when you become the foreclosure in Florida, when you when you go through the process and fill out the foreclosure application, then you go ahead and pay off all the delinquent taxes and they're going to give you 18% total on your money. And so and so you know within within 6 months from now I'm going to either going to get my money back with an 18% interest rate off my money, which you know how you can't beat that, or going to acquire a great piece of condo uh, you know, a condo within within a mall, and there's there's a big group of these, uh, and so there's just a lot of different strategies out there depending on depending on how you want to get started, and also depending on how much capital you have. Obviously, uh, you know, if you have a thousand dollars to invest, uh, you know, there's some good tax certificates that you can get for that, uh, and that's a good way to get started. Um, but unless you're purchasing tax liens, uh, you know, maybe on on a on the a piece of land that doesn't have as much value. So maybe it's still a good sellable property because it's a, a, a full-size building lot that's worth 10 grand or 12 grand or 15 grand, uh, but you can get it for a thousand and foreclose on it. You know, you might, you know, good chance the property owner will pay it off because he sees 20, he knows it's worth 20, you know, 15 grand and it's a good sellable property. Uh, but as that increases, maybe it's two or three thousand. Then you might have a better chance to get it. We can do those same numbers with the larger property. And so with tax lien investing, it really depends on your strategy. If you're looking for interest rate returns, uh, you know there's different strategies you're going to use versus if you're trying to acquire property through tax liens. So let's go ahead and let's talk about choosing your investment bracket. So after we went through and reviewed these investment brackets. Um, you're going to want to choose a bracket that works best, really best on your race, resources and objectives. So you know exactly how much you probably have to invest, uh, and that's going to help you determine where you can get started. And it doesn't matter if you, you know, have uh, $500 to get started, or if you have, you know, you know, half a million dollars to get started. Uh, there's investors that I've talked to this week, you know, between all of those strategies, you know, through through all those amounts. I talked to an investor this week that has 1.4 million just to put into tax and certificates. They want to invest all that in tax liens because they see that they can make such a better interest rate return on it. Uh, you know, there's there's other students I've worked with that you know only have a couple thousand dollars to get started, and so we go through and talk about the different strategies in in in, in you know getting started with tax liens with with where they're at. Uh, now, as far as as far as using the investment brackets, uh, once you've chosen a bracket, you can start reviewing tax liens that are going to fit within that bracket price range. Uh, now, as I mentioned, you know, kind of put a disclaimer. Uh, you know, property prices or, or lien amounts can vary, but that gives kind of gives you an idea. And so, obviously, as as the tax lien goes up in that area, you're going to find better tax liens. Uh, and then, you know, for Lower dollar properties, maybe you know, you're going to look for the best type of property. So even if you're purchasing a $500 tax lien, you want to find the best property you can for that $500. Uh, 
uh, uh, you know, and so, you know, regardless of where you're getting started, there's going to be tax liens out there that are going to fit your investment bracket. That's the good thing, you know. Uh, there's fifty dollar, hundred dollar tax liens out there. You know, you're still going to make, you're still going to make a good interest rate off of it. You know, and there's a lot of people who have money right now sitting in, uh, sitting in just a savings account. You know, making making really nothing per year as far as an interest rate return, and there that money could be out there purchasing their, uh, tax and certificates or investing and making some decent money on them. And if it's your strategy is to acquire property, uh, then there's strategies. But if you're just if you, if all you want to do is just earn an interest rate return, uh, you know, and you don't want to spend a ton of work, tax and certificates are a good way to go uh, because you're going to be earning an interest rate return. Uh, if you do acquire the property, you got it for for you know for a small percentage of its value. Uh, if not, then then you're just going to make your interest rate return, and usually it's going to beat most of the interest rate returns that you can earn out there. Uh, it's also going to be the safest investment. You know, if the market the stock market crashes tomorrow, that's not going to affect tax and certificates. You know, tax and certificates are still going to be earning whatever their interest rate is. Uh, so you can also customize your investment brackets. Based on your strategies, you know. For example, let's say an investor has ten thousand dollars in tax liens. Uh, in fact, I think I actually have a slide that talks about that. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So here's here's investor Bob. He has ten thousand dollars. He'd like to invest in a county tax lien sale. Uh, now, investor Bob can choose ten thousand in several different investment brackets, and this is really going to depend on the on the area. Uh, but you know. The strategy can be used really anywhere as far as far as um, as far as the tax lien amount. So the the numbers may be different. You know, you might be only get one tax lien within an area for ten thousand at the price range you wanted, but uh, on the type of property you want. Um, but it's kind of a good idea or a good rule of thumb to think of. So as far as one tax lien, you can purchase one tax lien for ten thousand. You can purchase two tax liens for five, and it just kind of going down the list, you know, uh, down to ten tax liens for a thousand dollars per lien. Uh, and so that ten thousand, you know, that ten tax liens for a thousand dollars per lien may be on, you know, on thirty-five thousand dollar building lots, but he has that spread up, or she has that spread over ten different investments, uh, you know, maybe hoping to, to that one of them might go to the end and foreclose, where they acquire property for a thousand dollars that's worth thirty. You know, there's still good money in that. I mean, even if you can pick up a property for, for uh, you know, three grand, you can turn around and sell for twelve grand. There's there's investment in there. There's a you know, you can you could make, you know, six or eight grand, and you're only spending you know, you'd only be investing so much money for the the amount of profit. You could easily double, triple, quadruple your profit. Uh, so there's you know, there's just a lot of opportunity. So let's talk about investment bracket or bracketing tax deeds. Uh, and so, for those investors that are looking to acquire property through tax deeds, uh, this is going to help give you an idea as far as their brackets, uh, similar to what we did with the with the tax and certificates. So here are the different brackets. Uh, as far as ten to a thousand dollars, these are going to be prime properties that are worth anywhere between a thousand to about twenty thousand. Now, you know, as far as the property types, these are going to be, you know, uh, it can. Building lots, mobile home lots, timeshares, uh, you know, farmland. Uh, it could also be, uh, you know, half of somebody's backyard. Um, there's there's a lot of different type of tax and certificates out there. And what I'm looking for is value. Uh, you know, for example, let's say that there's there's a $500 tax lien on a uh, a small strip of land out in the middle of nowhere, uh, you know, or even a small strip of land behind somebody's behind somebody's yard uh, that has a value of of you know twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, but then there's another tax lien that is for that same five hundred dollar tax lien, but it's worth you know twenty five thousand, and it's half of somebody's yard, uh, you know. Even though that that property, you know, is only just half of somebody's yard, they're going to want that yard. So if it has if it has size to it, and it has value to it, then I may even be interested in looking at that tax and certificate if I can get a, the highest interest rate, 
uh, even though that just may be, uh, you know, half of somebody's yard. Uh, and so, you know, as far as looking at tax and certificates, what we're really looking for is 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 there value in the property? Uh, you know, even though you know that might not be an ideal tax lien in a lot of people's eyes, you know, that it has 99.9 percent .9 chance of getting paid off because nobody's going to want to lose, you know, half of their yard. Uh, in a tax sale, uh, they're you know they're going to want to be able to keep that versus you know a, a, a foot and a half strip in land, uh, you know that goes behind ten people's yards. You know nobody cares about that. But if it's taking half your yard, then then somebody's going to care about it. Uh, now as far as tax deeds, you're not going to be purchasing those properties at a tax deed auction. But you know that's going to be really more of a strategy for tax and certificates. So with tax deeds, what you do want to make sure is that you have a way to sell it. That's really the primary th uh, thing. Uh, is you know if it's a residential building lot, you know any of these type of properties, you want to make sure uh, that you have the ability to sell it. And so you know usually I wouldn't uh, use the strategy of purchase somebody half of somebody's yard at a tax deed auction unless I already have some, had something worked out with the buyer beforehand to be able to purchase you know sell the property to them after the auction. And they may they may be the person that's most interested uh, in in buying it because obviously because it's part, you know, it's it's part of their yard. Uh, but that's, you know, with that strategy it's something you you don't have to have worked out beforehand. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you already had something in place. Uh, so usually you're going to look for something you could turn around and flip very easy. Uh, uh, as far as as far as those type of properties, you know, they're going to be anywhere, anywhere between a thousand to twenty thousand. You know, there's going to be thousand uh, dollar tax deeds out there that are probably worth twenty grand. You could turn around and make ten grand off of it. You know, you're not going to make you're not going to make ten thousand. I mean, you're not going to make you know hundred thousand dollars. But if you have a thousand dollars to invest and you can make ten grand off of it, my goodness, you know, that's ten times that's ten times the amount. Uh, and even if it was, even if you could purchase it for a thousand, but you knew you could sell it for pretty quickly at ten thousand, well, you know, you you know, you're still going to make nine thousand uh, dollars. And so, you know, when you're starting out in that lower bracket, you know, look for properties that you can turn around and sell and make a, a quick buck on, a quick profit. Uh, as far as tax deeds in bracket number two, these are going to go up to about twenty-five hundred bucks. Uh, assessed value is going to range from uh, fifteen twenty up to about fifty thousand. And these are going to be, uh, you know, your building lots, your commercial lots, your mobile homes, uh, mountain land, vacation land. Uh, now, when we get into the to the twenty five hundred to five thousand dollar range, um, these are properties that can be, you know, assessed anywhere from thirty five thousand to eighty. Uh, this is where you're going to get a lot of your nicer lots, uh, your larger pieces of land, some of your lower dollar single family homes, mobile homes with land. Uh, maybe uh, commercial property, maybe small condos are going to start fitting in the kind of that price range. Uh, you know, for example, there may be uh, an auction in, in Florida where you have an opening bid of about $4,500 and it's worth about sixty-five grand, and it's a condo. Uh, in that scenario, you know, that's where that opening bid's going to start. Uh, it, it very well could, could bid for higher than that. Uh, and so that's also something to think about. Uh, when you're going through and preparing for an auction, usually you can get an idea by looking what happened last year uh, or last auction, uh, or you go back and view a couple of them. Uh, or, you know, also there's a lot of different variation uh, reasons why uh, there may be more competition, there may be less competition. That's the one thing about auctions; you just never know. I've participated in auctions where there was very little competition, and I've considered you know, competed and, and participated in auctions where the, comp the, the competition was fierce. Uh, it just really depends on the auction. But you, the good thing about it is, is you're going in there knowing exactly what you're going to pay. You're not going to become that emotional investor that, that you know, that just starts going after a property and paying more than you ever should. Uh, you're going to have the idea of how much the property is worth and how high you can go. And it, it can be different for every investor. Some investors say, I, won't, I don't want to go higher than 20 percent. And there's other investors that say, hey, I'll go up to 60 percent if I can turn around and make a, you know, a, a larger profit. And that's going to be, of course, the higher, you know, as the property value goes higher, then that gives you more room for profit. Uh, and so, you know, for an investor that 
that, that is buying a, a lot that's worth 10 grand, they may not want to pay six grand for it uh, because you know that means that there's only three or four thousand dollars worth of profit, and, and what if it takes a little bit of work or you know something like that, uh, you know, versus an investor that's spending you know two hundred thousand on a, on a tax deed property, and the property is worth four hundred. Uh, you know, there's a lot more room in two hundred grand to make profit than there is in you know in in three or four hundred dollars. Uh, and so that that's just kind of you know that's a, something to think about as you start investing in tax deed certificates and you start attending auctions. Uh, let's go ahead and hit on bracket numbers four and five and six. Go through these quickly. As far as investment bracket number four, these are going to be five to ten thousand dollar tax deeds. Assess value anywhere between fifty to a hundred thousand. Uh, these are your single family homes, your condos. Uh, your residential building lots, your commercial building lots, your large tracts of land. You know, you, you kind of think of, of the, my examples that I just showed you uh, with the Florida tax deeds we purchased. Uh, you know, one of them started out at about uh, five grand, and we, you know we bid it up to ten. Uh, the other one, you know, it was worth a, you know to check again. Um, if it was fifty-five, or I think it was fifty-five. Um, and that's the one where we're renting out. Uh, the other property is worth 65, and uh, you know we had to pay a little bit more for it because you know we paid 20,000 for it. Uh, and so it just really depends on the property. But we saw value in each one of those properties based on their neighborhood, based on uh, even though they weren't you know huge high-end properties, it would fit within that price range. You know we paid about 10,000 uh, for one, and it was you know it was worth about 55, and we paid uh, about 20,000 for one, and the other one's worth about 65 to 70. Uh, and and so with each property, you know there's a there's a certain amount of profit that can be made. Uh, with tax deeds, 10,000 to 15,000, that's where you're going to get properties that are worth anywhere from 75,000 uh, up to you know 60,000, uh, and the bidding may go higher than that. Uh, usually that's where you're going to see the opening bid amount. So the you know for a hundred sixty thousand dollar property, the bidding may be thirty thousand dollars or even forty thousand dollars because the investor knows a hundred sixty thousand dollar property there's going to be a higher room for profit. So as your is the is the property value goes up, so does your room for profit, which means that you can be more flexible to a degree, especially if the property is good, than you would be with with a lower end property or, or a lower dollar property because there's more room for profit, so hopefully that makes sense, uh, and that's that's some you know that's a good key to think about it uh, as you're going through and researching for property. Uh, tax deed number six, properties over fifteen thousand, uh, they can be worth hundred thousand up, uh, and these are going to be you know uh, that that can go up. I've seen properties sell for millions and millions of dollars, uh, you know because they may you know there's properties that have gone up for auction that are worth ten, fifteen million, uh, even more than that. Uh, and so, you know, there's all different types of property for any investment level. You can start out if you only have uh, limited funds, and you can purchase tax and certificates, or you could even look for tax deeds that you can purchase at a lower a lower amount, and turn around and make a profit on it. Uh, you make you make a profit even if it's only you know five thousand dollars. That's still a five thousand dollar profit, and now you have five times the amount of money to reinvest. You know, even if you turn around and double your profit, now you have twice as much amount to invest. Uh, and so uh, the key is just to find it. You know, go out there and get started and find a property uh, or in an area that you have the ability to find property within that price range. So as far as getting started with tax deeds, the opening bid amount is usually going to be a reflection of about five to ten percent of the property's assessed value. Uh, of course, depending on the area, it can go up uh, or down from there. But that's kind of generally where most properties will fit in. Um, the opening bid uh, amount will usually be the purchase price of the tax deed, uh, the purchase price for the tax deed, because it's going to go to auction, and so there may be other bidders. Now, you can acquire property for that opening bid amount, but there may be some competition. It really just depends on the auction, how many properties are coming up for auction. Uh, for example, if, if you're going to a county that has a lot of local investors uh, and uh, you know the, there's a lot of competition, between local investors to kind of puff out their chest, uh, well, you know, there may that may be a more competitive auction than 
than even an online auction that where there's a lot more property. So if you know if there's three homes for sale in the county auction and there's a lot of guys trying to win those or gals trying to win those properties, uh, and versus a in another auction, it could be at the county courthouse as well. But there's you know 200 single family homes for sale or 150,000 and 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 you know lots of other good types of properties. Well, in that property, you know, even though, uh, you know, even just because be, because there's, you know, a lot more, um, sorry about that, <laughs> had to adjust my phone. Um, because there's a lot more uh, property within that, oh, no, I just lost my train of thought. Let's go back to where we were. Come on. Okay. So as far as far as um, tax deeds, usually they're going to sell for about 10 to 25 percent of their market value. Uh, also, tax deed properties can be purchased uh, over the counter as well as at the auction. Uh, so you can attend auctions to purchase tax deeds. You can. Uh, there's a lot of auctions coming, uh, taking place online. Uh, you know, I mean, every year there's more counties that are adding their auctions, so you can purchase online, uh, or you can also look at over-the-counter tax deeds. Okay, so let's get into the quick glance method. Uh, you know, this is really one of the easiest ways to narrow down your uh, a tax sale list. The quick glance method is is really a simple process of selecting tax liens or deeds that fit a certain criteria and then disregarding the rest. So uh, there's really three different things that we're going to look at. Uh, and as far as utilizing this, this method, uh, these are the three categories that we're going to focus on. Now, one of them or all of them may be on a tax sale list. Tax sale lists vary. If you've, been do, if you've got involved in, in tax liens or deeds before, you know that lists can have different information. Uh, but they're, of course, usually going to have the minimum bid amount. You know, that's 99.9 .9 tax sale lists are going to have that. Uh, to give you an idea of how much the tax lien certificate is or, or where the tax deed auction, the opening bid price is. Uh, many of them are going to have the assessed value or the address. Uh, they're also going to have the parcel number, but we're going to use the parcel number later. Uh, we're going to use the parcel number to look up the property. Right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to really go through and scan the list and pick out tax lien certificates that we want to do some more research on. Then we're going to use that parcel number uh, to to research those properties. So each tax sale list usually provide an identification number, uh, the tax lien or deed amount, and a physical address. Also, some lists may use the property's assessed value. Uh, so they may have the assessed value, uh, the zoning, uh, that could have the owner information. It really just depends on the list. Now, if it has the assessed value, that becomes pretty easy because you can look at that opening bid amount and versus the assessed value. But we're, let's get into that in a minute. So really the concept behind this is to set a criteria using your resources and objective as you, and then apply, the, apply that information to the tax sale list. Uh, so this can usually be done, done just as you go through and, and glance at the list. As you go just kind of down that list, you're going to look for criteria that you've set uh, that fit within that parameter. So the process should be, you know, repeated uh, several times so that you can narrow down that tax sale list. Now, depending on the list, you could go ahead and, uh, if it's like an Excel list, you can, you know, delete those tax liens. You can highlight the ones. You can mark the ones. Uh, you're just going to go through and look for tax liens that fit that amount. And, 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 and on a, a PDF list, you may just go through, and once you see one within that price range, you copy and paste that parcel number, look up the property immediately as you're going through that list uh, to look for properties that fit your investment objectives. So really what you're going to be doing is, is narrowing down that list. Now, lists can vary. If, you know, if, it, if there's tax deed sale in a smaller area and it has 15 properties, it's not going to take you very long to go through and reach those research those properties, uh, but some tax lien lists are, are, are literally have you know thousands and thousands of tax liens. You know they may be selling you know 10,000 tax liens. Well, how are you going to go through 10,000 tax liens? Uh, 
Well, the good news is, is you can you can narrow that down uh, using this if it's a live auction. But a lot of the ones with large tax liens sell online, uh, and so there's parameters you can use on the online auctions to narrow down the list as well. So uh, with technology, it makes it easier for us as investors to apply this uh, to whatever list we're looking at. Okay, so. The minimum bid or the tax lien amount. This is really the first category that we're going to use as investors to narrow down the list. Uh, and the most obvious reason is your budget. You know, how much do you have to spend? Uh, you know, with tax sale investing, if you have more money, then you're going to usually look for higher priced properties because there's going to be uh, usually more profit in those properties. It's also going to be using that minimum minimum bid amount. It's going to be a good way to weed out, uh, you know, good investments from bad investments. And the reason is, is because the lien amount is a reflection of the property's value. You know, the higher the lien amount, the higher the property. Uh, really, the only exception to this rule, and I talked about this a little earlier, is if the lien amount or that total amount represents multiple years of delinquent taxes uh, instead of a single year. So, uh, you know, on a on a $100,000 home, uh, let's say that there was four years worth of delinquent taxes and each one of those delinquent taxes was for, you know, $5,000. Uh, and, you know, so that ta those total tax liens amount may be $20,000. Uh, that would be 20% versus, versus, you know, 2% or 3% of the property taxes because that's going to be several different years. Uh, but the higher that lien amount, as long as there's good property value, then those are tax and certificates you can foreclose on. Uh, you know, And that's really, that's really the tax liens that usually are the ones that do foreclose on. You know, you're usually not going to foreclose on a property and get a property for $1,000. Uh, you know, there's chances are, I mean, well, I guess it depends on the, what I'm talking about, now I'm talking about a $100,000 property. You know, you're not going to get a hundred thousand dollar property for a thousand dollars. It's just not going to happen because would you pay? I mean, would you lose a hundred thousand dollar home for a thousand dollars? No. Uh, you know, and and ninety nine percent of the time, ninety nine point nine point nine percent of the time, those type of tax and certificates are going to get paid off. You're going to make your interest rate return. Well, you know, suddenly if that's twenty thousand uh, dollars, that's going to be a lot harder to pay off, especially if you start the foreclosure process. And the property owner has so much time. You know, this may not be. You, you know, this may be somebody's second property. Uh, you know, it could. There's a lot of usually, a lot of different reasons why uh, the property may be to this point. But they're going to have a lot harder time paying that off, regardless of of what the owner's position is. You know, twenty thousand dollars in in that foreclosure time in three months or six months, uh, versus somebody who only has a thousand dollars. So you're going to have a higher chance of getting that property, and when you're, and if not, you're going to make your interest rate return off their money. So either way, it's going to be a good scenario uh, because even if you acquired a hundred thousand dollar home for twenty thousand, there's still a huge amount for profit within that property. Uh, you know, there's eighty thousand dollars you could you could uh, potentially make, even if you turn around and wholesale it for sixty percent of its value, uh, you could still make, uh, you know. Forty thousand dollars off the property, uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars, and so there's there's you know in, so even in that type of property there's still a lot of room profit. And that's the great thing about tax lien investing, tax deed investing, uh, you know, because you're getting property for a small amount, uh, a small percentage of the actual property value, cheaper than you can find anywhere else. There's no way you can get property cheaper than you can through tax lien and deed investing. That's just the bottom line, uh, you know, unless you somehow you know, maybe there's huge portfolios of, of properties that some investors may be able to buy for, you know, 20 cents on the dollar or something. Uh, but that, you know, tax deed investing is, is the way for, for your average investor uh, to go out there and, and earn the best interest rates on their money. I mean, the banks do this. In the secondary market, when we purchase secondary market tax liens and offer secondary market tax liens, uh, you know, these are tax liens. Uh, that that were owned by large banks, you know, and and many of these tax liens were purchased in areas where only you know the county sold or the city sold all of the tax liens to just one of these large banks. 
So there's not even normal investors out here. And I guess you know your average investor like me is participating in these auctions. You've got to have twenty million dollars to purchase these portfolios. And so these are the large banks that many of you uh, go to or drive past every day. They've been purchasing tax and certificates for the last you know for the last fifty hundred years uh, with tax deed auctions. That you know that that's been something that's been happening since really the founding of our country. Once they started collecting property taxes. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is something that's, that's been a way for investors to make money for a long period of time. So here's an example. As we go through and look at this different, you know, this tax sale list, uh, we're going to look at that minimum bid amount. That's going to tell us a little bit about the property. It's, you know, it's, it's going to give us a reflection of the property's value. And so what, essentially what we're doing is we're going down, and this really isn't a great list because there's a lot kind of within the same price range. But let's say there was, you know, a, uh, a five thousand dollar tax lien, you know, a, a six hundred ninety dollar tax lien, just a varying amounts. As we go through and we're scanning that list, we're going to look for properties that fit within our within our, put, you know, within our price range. So if you have ten thousand dollars to invest, and you're going to be looking for the higher dollar tax liens, you know, you may look for tax liens that are anywhere between five to ten thousand, and and really that same strategy goes to tax deeds in a lot of ways as well. Uh, you know, you're going to look for properties within within a, a specific price range, and that's going to help you narrow down the list. So suddenly, you know, you have a list of two hundred. Well, there may only be ten properties that fit within your parameter, and so now you've narrowed that down to ten properties. That's going to be a lot easier to research. You know, you're just going to go ahead and Take the partial number, research the property. So as far as the assessed value, that's something that could be on a tax sale list as well. Uh, that's the that's the value the county assigns to the property by the county assessors. Now, as far as assessed values, they're going to be based on the details about the property, uh, and they're going to use their own their own comparable system to be able to do it. Uh, now. Regardless of what the, whether the assessed value reflects the exact value or not, it still can be used as a guideline. So there's some times where uh, the assessed value is really about 50% of, of what the actual property, which the market value is. And that's because the assessed value isn't really going to be based on uh, just the, the, the market value. It's going to be based on uh, what the county's budget is. And so, you know, whatever that county budget is, then they're going to figure out how much all of the real estate within within that area is worth, uh, and then assign a property tax rate to it. Uh, and so, the assessed value isn't always going to be a you know tell us exactly how much the property is worth, but it's going to be a good indication. You know, if you see a, a ten thousand dollar tax lien that has assessed value at sixty or seventy or eighty or you know, ninety thousand or whatever it is, you're going to say, okay, well, this property has some value. Let's see what it is. You know, you're going to take that parcel number, type it in, look up the property records quick, and you're going to know within within you know 30 seconds if it's a good property or not. Uh, you know, if you look at the property, say, well, that's not bad. Then you're going to do some more due diligence, you know, later on on any of those properties that look that look pretty good. So here's a list that we can use as an indication. Uh, we can see that you know that appraised price. That's going to be the you know really the assessor's price, and we can see you know one of the properties worth seventy nine thousand. Uh, we can see there's some value there. We can also see this property is worth one hundred seventy eight thousand and ninety nine thousand. Uh, so if I was looking for properties that I could make anywhere from uh, fifty to one hundred thousand dollars on, well then I may look at each one of these properties. Uh, we can also see, and we'll probably get into this in a minute. We can see that the address is listed right here as well. Uh, so if I can see, you know, the assessed value, the opening bid amount, and the, and the address, I can do some research on that property real quick. And so with this particular property, it has a, you know, a seven thousand dollar opening bid, and it has a value of about seventy nine. Uh, and so what we're going to be looking at is that is that bid to value ratio. Uh, you know, how much is the property worth? Uh, then what is the bidding amount, and also what is going to be the sold to value ratio? You know, how high am I willing to go? This property may be worth 79 grand. Let's say it opens up. It's you know, let's look too far. 
if it, let's say it opens up at you know it's seven thousand dollars and it's worth seventy nine thousand, how high am I willing to go? Uh, am I willing to double it? Uh, you know, am I willing to, at that point, you know, go up to fourteen thousand? Uh, just going to be based on the property. Maybe I'm even willing to go with twenty thousand dollars because I know I could turn around and sell it really quickly. Uh, you know, just going to be looking at each one of those properties, figuring how much you have to invest, and then finding the best properties that fit what you have to invest. So there's a lot of texts that list out there that are going to provide a, the physical address. Guys, this makes it so easy for us when they have the physical address, they have the assessed value. Uh, you know, sometimes we need to go find the address and the parcel number, but even then it's only a 30 second tool. Because once we found that property address, we can use that address to go to something as simple as, as Google Maps, type in that address, and, and review the, you know, in most cases, a, a striped, a street side view of the property. You're going to be able to go up and down the neighborhood. Uh, see what the property looks like. Uh, you know, technology has made it so easy for us to do primary. You know, that first that first due diligence research on a property just by using online tools. You know, we can even use something like Zillow. Uh, you know, see what their estimate is, but then we can find. Uh, you know, just right there on Zillow, all of the comparable properties, properties that are similar that have sold within that neighborhood. You know, if I see a property that's exactly like the property I'm looking at, and I can see that they, you know, there's been four properties that have sold within the last year within that neighborhood, and these properties are all similar to mine, and they sold for this certain dollar figure, well, I know my property can sell for about that. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty close to what the market is, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, but it's going to give you a pretty good close market, and then I'm going to know how much I'm willing to purchase it when I attend the auction. Uh, I know how much I'm going to, you know, be willing to to purchase the tax and certificate and pay the roll up for, uh, you know, based on based on how much the property is valued at. Uh, if there's good profit, then it, it's just a good safe investment. So we can even use that physical address to to really uh, do a lot of research on the property. It's also going to give us a good idea. Uh, you know, let's say that this list has physical addresses, and you're going through and you find, you know two $5,000 tax liens, one of them has a physical address and one doesn't, well, you know, if unless you're looking for large tracts of land, you're probably not going to look at that one with the physical address. Uh, you know, you're going to look at the one with the property address because that's going to give you something that you can find out where the property is located, what is the property very quickly. Okay. So as far as the physical address, there's really two different ways to use the physical address. The first is to determine the estimated property value uh, using some online resources. So using Google Maps, uh, using uh, uh, Zillow.com, uh, Realtor.com, any of those type of websites to find out what the property value is. Uh, also, you can use the physical address to identify whether a property has improvements or not. Uh, you know, if you if you look overhead on some of those, you're going to be able to see if the property had uh, any type of improvements. Uh, you know, if, if it does, then there's a good chance it's going to be some type of structure, uh, you know, some type of sellable structure, if it's a, you know, regardless if it's a condominium or a home uh, or some type of commercial property. So here's, here's kind of an example of using the, the quick glance method. We're looking here at a tax deed list. First thing we're going to look at is that minimum bid amount. So uh, that minimum bid amount is going to tell us a little bit as far as you know how much this property is worth. Also, we have the physical address. So with this list, we have the parcel number, the street address, the minimum bid, and the property address. Uh, and so usually uh, the the street address is going to be the same as the property address. Uh, so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be scanning this tax sale list. Let's, let's say that, you know, we have a, we're looking for tax deeds, you know, uh, anywhere between two to five grand. Uh, as we go through and look at this list, we're going to be looking for properties that fit within that price range. So uh, here's a property, uh, you know, worth starting at 2000 200. You know, here's another one 
2897. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking to see that, that address uh, to give us a good idea of what that property is. So this one that says east 20 feet you know, of government lot subject B, well, that doesn't have an address. So you, if you're a first-time investor or somebody that doesn't live within that area, you're probably not going to spend time looking at that. Uh, you know, a property that has an address like this one here, uh, 2815 Douglas Avenue, well, that's a property we can research. We can do some research on it very quickly and find out exactly what the property is. Uh, then, of course, we're also going to take that parcel number. Once we've narrowed down the list, we're going to take that parcel number, go back to the county website, and start doing some research on, on the different tax deeds. Okay, so I didn't realize how late we are. We did start late, though. So let's go, let's go ahead and uh, let's get through this real quickly. Um, I'm sure that for some of you guys, it's getting late. Uh, so as, as, far as, as far as here's another example in using that, uh, the quick glance method. Uh, you know, we have the parcel number here. We have the site address. We have the assessed value. We have the uh, acreage size. Uh, then we have the legal description. And then we have the minimum bid amount. So with this tax sale list, it's going to give me some pretty good information to determine, you know, which properties I want to invest in. Uh, you know, if I'm looking for a property between five to ten grand, well, this very first property, I can see it's, you know, starts at seventy-eight hundred. Uh, you know, it's just under eight thousand uh, dollars, and it's, you know, it's sixty acres, but it does have a high assessed value. Uh, so if I'm not interested in 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 land, then I may, you know, go ahead and scratch that. Uh, but I would definitely look look into it a little bit because what we're looking for is that value. Uh, you know, here's a couple of other uh, properties. Looks like they're uh, you know 1,700 bucks about, and they're worth about 21,000. They're two and a half acres. And then here's another you know 5,000 uh, 5,000 dollar tax deed opening bid. Uh, we can see it's on 1.1 acres. It's worth 55,000, but it has an address. Uh, and so we would go ahead and research that address and find out, you know, what its property is. Is it a structure? Is there a structure on the property? Uh, and do some more research. Uh, we can see this other property here starting at, at 9,000, just over 9,000. Uh, we can see it's 3.7 acres, and this is actually, I believe this is in Pennsylvania. So these were some larger, uh, larger properties, but they were, you know, I remember looking at some of these, and these were uh, single-family homes, you know valued in 139000 uh, We could research that address real quick and, and find out more about the property. Uh, same here is this, you know, one for seven, uh, 7700 uh, You know, larger site property but has a high value and also an address. Uh, and so we could go ahead and research these properties. So we know these, you know, these first three properties, these last three properties are some type of single family home structure valued anywhere from 55, which I believe was uh, some type of uh, modular home up to 139, which was a, which was a nicer farmhouse, uh, and so uh, you know just depending on the amount, we can see this you know $1,700 tax deed is on 2.5 acres, but there's 21,000 value there. So you know really that might be a decent investment if you could pick it up for 2,000 and turn around and sell it for even 15, you're going to make a good profit on it. So once you've obtained a tax sale list, really the next the next step is to go through this process uh, to uh, you know bracket your tax liens and then use that bracket information to uh, go through and and use the quick glance method to just narrow down and, and research tax lien certificates or research that list. And what you're going to find is you go through that list and you start doing this more and more. You're going to be able to do it quicker and quicker. You're just going to be scanning that list, finding properties. You know, quickly looking at the you know whatever information is available. Uh, if there's uh, if it has the minimum bid amount, you're going to look at that. If it has an address, you're going to look at that. Uh, if it has assessed value, then you can you know the more information, the quicker you can make a determination if it's a tax lien or tax deed that you're interested in researching. Uh, and so, really, the primary objective is to determine the estimated value um, and how much the property is worth. Uh, that way, you know it's a secure investment with tax and certificates, or you know that you can make money on it with tax deeds. 
So let's go ahead and let's get through these county websites. I know we've actually run over this evening, and I'm just getting text. Uh, my sister just barely had uh, twins, so she just had uh, baby twin girls. And just got a text message about it, so uh, you know that was uh, was the sound going on. So let's go ahead and let's get through these property records uh, and uh, talk about county websites quick. And then also, guys, there's going to be a, a boot camp happening not this Saturday but next Saturday. And I'm going to go ahead and send the invites for, for everyone here on the line. Uh, this is going to be a weekend boot camp, uh, you know, a two-hour webinar Saturday morning, uh, two week, uh, week from Saturday. And we're really going to get into some good information. Uh, if, if, if there's, you know, if there's a lot of questions, I'll stay late. Uh, we'll just continue uh, talking and learning about tax liens and deeds. So I'll be sending you guys an invitation for that. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's talk quickly about uh, county websites and property records. Really, guys, county websites are going to be our greatest tool as tax sale investors. We're going to use the websites to research tax sale lists. We're going to use the websites to review property. Uh, we're going to use the websites uh, really is, is the major thing that we're going to do. The only thing, uh, you know, that you really need besides the county websites is going to be, you know, the, the information that's available on our website. Uh, you're, and the way to get the county website information is just by going to NACO.org. Uh, and that's really one of the easiest ways to search county websites. So as you find the information, you know, let's say you, you download an over-the-counter list or an upcoming auction list, uh, you can go and, uh, and go directly to the county website and start researching the property on that list by going to the property appraiser or the assessor and doing a uh, parcel search. So most county websites provide separate web pages for the treasurer and the assessor. Uh, this is where we're going to find the location of the tax sale, the redemption period, uh, the foreclosure proceedings, the tax auction property list, uh, the question and answers, any type of tax sale records, uh, tax payments. So we're going to find all the information at either one of these websites. As far as the county's assessor's office, this is where we're going to find you know, any of the county record information. So this is going to include, you know, the legal address if we don't already have that, the the lot size, the maps, the improvements. So if it does have improvements, when was it built? How many square feet is it? Um, you know, how many bedrooms? How many baths? Where well, we're going to find all the information on the property. If it's land, how much is the land valued? What is the size? Uh, you know, uh, then you're going to go ahead and click on the map and see and see, you know, any other additional information you can find. Uh, and, and depending on the county record, they can vary. Uh, some of them will have sales information. Uh, some of them, will, well, most of them will have sales information, but some will have photos. Uh, it just really depends on the county. Uh, every county is going to be different. Some of them just maybe make more basic information. But what we are going to be able to find is information to help us make, uh, or at least a good a good portion of information to help make a decision if we're going to invest in the property. You know, it may take more research above that, but the county records are going to at least let us know if it's something we need to be interested in. It's going to be able to, you know, we're going to be able to see what the property sold for, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, 20 years. Uh, we're going to get an idea of what the assessed value is, you know, what year was built. A lot of that good information uh, that we're going to make, you know, need to make a good decision. So in the assessor's office, they have what's called the parcel search. Many of you have probably used it. If you haven't, uh, it's a pretty simple process to use. Uh, you can search by parcel number. Uh, depending on the county, a lot of them will have different searches as well. You can search by owner, or address. And really all we do is we just t type in the parcel number, the owner's address, the address, uh, the owner's information. We're going to search and pull up the property records. Uh, and so, you know, the parcel search tool can change from county to county uh, with some online list or, or uh, you know, internet auction list. You can just click on the parcel number and it'll pull up the property record. Uh, and so it just really depends on the county, but uh, we're going to use this uh, to research any tax sale list. Uh, so it's really something you're going to become familiar with. Here's two examples of property records. You can see the property record on the left is, is really just more of information. The property on the right, we can see pictures. Uh, and so property records you know, will vary from county to county, but we're still going to find out good information. You know, the one on the left, we can still see uh, you know, what the property is, single family, 
uh, we can you know see the property's address, uh, the zoning. Uh, we can also see who the property owner is, uh, the sales information when it's sold, 2001, 97, 19, 81. Uh, what the land value is, the improvement value, the total value. Uh, so we're still going to get some pretty good information on the property. Uh, the, the property on the right, we're going to have additional information. We can see uh, a photo of the property. Uh, we can also click on any of these different things, uh, like the map viewer. Uh, we're also going to see tax history down here. And this would, this would uh, if we were to continue to scroll down, this would also have that information as well. Uh, and so, you know, this one may have additional photo and, and uh, a little bit a little bit more information, they're both going to have the information we need to, to figure out what the property is worth. Um, also, you know, chances are this property also, this county also has some type of map feature. A lot of the counties do now. Uh, so some counties will give us a photo. Uh, most counties will give us some type of map, and that's going to be real helpful. You're going to be able to see, OK, is, is you know, how many lots are within this area or uh, you know how many properties or, or what type of neighborhood is my property that I'm looking at is in. You're also going to be able to determine the size of the lot and really have a good idea of, of what the shape of the lot is. Uh, you know if we saw that this this property was just a small uh, you know one foot piece behind behind this property well uh, that's going to be different uh, we're going to know that's probably not a property we're going to do a lot of research on. Uh, versus, you know, where we see a full property like this, you know, some type of structure. Or even if this was an empty building lot, uh, you know, that was something you could definitely look into, especially if it has value. So as far as the county records, we're going to use the property records, we're going to use the tax records, uh, we're going to use the land maps. Uh, we're going to use all this information to help educate us on, on the particular properties we're looking at. Uh, it's really going to be the key is, is you having the ability to to uh, to research this information. Uh, it's going to give you the information, give me the information we need to to decide if we're going to you know uh, invest in this property or if we're purchasing purchasing this tax lien certificate. Uh, we're going to use this information, uh, and so you're really going to want to become familiar if you're not already uh, with how to be able to do it. And it really just takes practice. Uh, really, just going through and going through it a couple of times, different counties, you're going to be find within within a short period of time, you're going to really become a pro at it. Uh, you're going to be able to go through research tax sale lists very quickly, narrow down, down those lists into investments that fit within your objective, uh, research those properties uh, in a lot shorter period of time, uh, and, and then also, of course, making decisions. So as you go through this process and do it once, then it becomes easier the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Uh, this is like anything else. Uh, the first time, if you haven't made an investment yet, it could be a little bit scary. But once you've made a couple investments, then it's easier and easier. And you also get more and more excited because you see the profit that it can be had. And that doesn't matter if that's earning it, you know, an interest rate return better than your, than your stock broker is ever going to get you. Also, it's going to be safer because it's backed by real estate and backed by state law. Uh, or if that's becoming a real estate investor and purchasing tax deeds, and buying property and doing flips or beginning rentals. Uh, so, you know, there's just a lot of different strategies. That's what I love about tax lien and deed investing, tax sell investing. Uh, that's the reason that, uh, it, it, you know, I'm um, spending time uh, teaching it uh, just because I love teaching it. I love talking about it. Uh, you know, I love teaching other people about these strategies that, that I've been using and have, have been learning and teaching for, you know, uh, really about 15 years now. Uh, and so there's just so much opportunity. There's so many investors that I've seen have changed their life by becoming a tax lien and deed investor. I mean, even if you, let's say you did three properties a year, uh, but you made, you know, $50,000 on each property. Well, how much, you know, $150,000 a year, uh, that's going to help a lot of individuals. Or even if you have an old 401k account that you turn over to a self-directed account, uh, and you're earning money off your money. Uh, you know, you're making 3% or 5% in your account, and now you're making 18% or even 12%, 15%. You know, that's a good interest rate return. That's a lot better interest rate return, and it's also going to be backed against a, a good piece of property. And if they don't pay you back, then you can foreclose, and you've just got a property that you purchased for, you know, 5% of its value, 10% of its value.
So as far as county websites, there's different formats, uh, and they're going to have a you know as far as property records, there's going to be differences. Um, but the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check the individual county records on each one of the properties. And as you get into the due diligence and you, and you research your property more and more, you're going to want to research as much information that's available. You know, if you can research the map, research the map. If they have, uh, you know, if it's a structure and there's I hit a little whistle when I did that. Uh, if there's a structure and uh, there's some type of uh, structure on the property and it has sketches, then uh, you can go ahead and and you know review that information. You know, click on any of the links so that you can review as much information as available. Uh, and really, with with county records, practice is, is going to make perfect. As you go through and do it more and more, it's going to become easier and easier for you. So as as far as as far as the webinar tonight, that's uh, that's that's really the webinar. Um, uh, hopefully, that's going to help give you guys a good idea uh, about uh, how to get started. Uh, also, feel free to attend uh, Saturday's uh, not this Saturday, but a week from Saturday's boot camp. Uh, we're going to be going over a lot of information. Uh, we're going to be uh, covering some some great topics. We're going to be looking at uh, possible investments. Uh, and then there's also going to be some, some some cool things that are going to be included in it as well. So I recommend you attend that. Uh, also, I'm going to uh, uh, be uploading this webinar. Uh, so if you'd like to review any of this information, if you'd like to review last week's information, uh, go ahead and do it. I'm also going to be looking at creating some more videos uh, to put up on the, the website uh, to review. So on different subjects, on question and answers. Uh, and so there's just a lot of good things going. We're going to continue. Uh, uh, you know, building this community, uh, making more tools available to you, uh, and uh, helping you guys become successful in tax and indeed investing. So, again, thank you for being on the line tonight. Uh, I've been just getting text after text, and I need to go. I'm going to go. I need to, but I'm going to go and uh, stop by the hospital on my way home and, and say hi to my sister and look, uh, uh, meet her uh, new baby twin. So I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, um, again, thank you guys for attending the webinar. I appreciate you being here. I'm excited that you spent the evening with me and we were able to talk a little bit about tax and deed investing. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, you should have my email address. Uh, it's uh, Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, uh, tax, T-A-X, liens, L-I-E-N-S, uh, at uh, yahoo.com. Uh, excuse me, not Yahoo, Gmail. Uh, gmail.com. I'll actually be sending you out an email uh, with uh, with just uh, just kind of letting you know about as far as attending. Uh, make sure that you, that you're able to get into the username, use your username, and password on the website. Uh, so feel free to email me back uh, if there's anything I can do. And uh, again, welcome uh, to uh, Taxing Investor Secrets, the you know uh, our community. So thank you and have a great evening.